Why is my recording sound so awful? Calm down, little boy. Mike? With Become the Night? Shut up, shut your damn mouth. You want to sound amazing, kid? No, I want to sound good. Uh oh, well then you don't want Recordio. Oh my god. Oh my god. Recordio is an online lesson platform for recording your guitar. They have lessons on recording gear, amps, the anatomy of a guitar, how to properly mic things. It's very comprehensive. They have just launched Recordio, and this launch gives you a $97 special for an entire year subscription. Make sure you follow the link in the description, let them know that I sent you, and sign up today. Oh! I'm gonna come over there and prank your dad. Hey guys, it is Michael to come tonight. Welcome back to another Song Suggestion Friday. Today is the Disney edition of Song Suggestion Friday. We're gonna have our normal rules resuming. You can find those in that video and link in the description. Today, I am joined by my friend Joey, who is, I would say, a would you call yourself a bit of a Disney fanatic? I a bit, yeah. Okay, just oh, just a bit. A little bit. Actually, Joey is release. Or did you already release it? You released your album? No, it's Jan January first. January first. All right. Stay tuned because we'll actually be doing another video on that. So, all right, let's get started. You've got a friend in me by Toy. Well, not by Toy Story. Jesus. <laughs> You've got a friend in me from Toy Story. So I don't understand how Randy Newman has a career, honestly. <laughs> I somehow knew this was going to be your opinion. <laughs> What's your feeling on Randy Newman? He is very, very, very bad most of the time. <laughs> thought you were going to use more of a euphemism there. <laughs> but he has his moments of brilliance, and I, I honestly think this song is one of them. Yeah, and I, like, I will say, like, the actual songwriting in the song is great, you know? Mm -hmm. It's super catchy, it, it's a very enjoyable progression, you can tell by um, listening to how he composes, especially how his chords move. He's a piano player. Mm -hmm. Like, that screams piano player right there. I think the production's excellent on the song. Like, yeah. as far as, like, the recording of the track and everything. He has, like, nice touches of, like, strings and horns throughout this kind of poke through every once in a while. Add, adds more character. Like, I think without that, the song would kind of be dull, honestly. I think the thing that it accomplishes more than... <laughs> Even just beyond the song itself, is it really perfectly captures the tone of Toy Story, the movie itself? You think I, so? I think so. I think it just perfect because it's right in that opening. Yeah. That opening credits montage, mm -hmm. and it's just like Andy playing with the toy, and it's just this nice, nice, this nice light little grooving thing that's not that in your face, but it's like pulled back, and it's like kind of light-hearted, and and the lyrics I think match well. Yeah, and you know, you got a friend in me, the toy. From yeah. the twice perspective. I thought Randy Newman was black for the longest time <laughs> when I was a kid because of his voice. I thought he was like some bluesy, like cigarette smoking black guy. But nope, he's a New Orleans uh, yeah, that, white I mean, guy. <laughs> yeah, he's, just, he's from New Orleans. That pretty much explains it right there. That's why he did Princess and the Frog, which is another one of his highlights. I didn't know he did that. Yeah, oh. he did the songs for that. I'll have to check that out. So is that an upright bass? Because it, like, it has a feel of an upright bass, but the tone says electric to me. I don't remember. All right, well, that, that, that's my feeling on mm -hmm. it. It's a very simple song, very heartwarming. Total grade for this song, equal sign. I'll give it an equal sign as well. I enjoy it when it comes on, but I wouldn't look for it personally. The Circle of Life from The Lion King. This is the one that actually intrigued me enough that I actually sat down and analyzed some of it while I was listening, which took more time than I wanted it to, but I didn't care because I was having fun. <laughs> Hans Zimmer did the orchestrations for this, this movie. No shit. All the score as well. That explains a lot. Oh my gosh, one of the most iconic intros to any song. Hans Zimmer has a concert, a new like a concert DVD on Netflix that was just recently added, and the the, the entire time I was just waiting for it, and then suddenly, <laughs> all of a sudden, the guy's just like, ah, it's my neon, and I was like, yep, there it was. This always reminds me of, um, I grew up in Pennsylvania, and there would always be Pennsylvania lottery commercials all the time with that stupid fucking groundhog, because it's the only thing that they use, punk to Tony Phil, you know? Okay. So, every time I would hear that, I would think, Pennsylvania, <laughs> when you play the lotto. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I'm a like. broke now. <laughs> Which, fun fact, as far as I'm aware, that literally translates to, oh, it's a lion, look, it's a lion, like a bunch of stuff like that. Are you serious? <laughs> I think so. That's fucking amazing. I don't know if that was a meme that I just saw or if that was for real, but <laughs> I, it's, in my heart, that's the truth. <laughs> the vocal arrangements for this are fantastic. Um, at uh, 8.28 when they go him and yana, him and I love that groove. It's like gives me a little bit of chills. Which for the record, I'm gonna be saying this a lot because I 
I always get chills when I listen to this song. It's actually one of my favorite melodies in, in any of the Disney songs is from this one, the, the main melody. And actually when I was listening to it, because I was listening to it with the headphones and everything, I never noticed there's like a little bit of a, a synthesized piano in the background. Oh, Very really? Light. And there's also a triangle playing too. 90s, I guess. Yes, yeah, 90s. <laughs> So it gives it away, yeah. is that fucking, that specific synth sound. Mm -hmm. Absolutely love the drums in this. And as I understand it, that's just like a regular rock kit, right? There's just toms and snare. That wouldn't surprise me. It's not knowing Hans Zimmer. I mean, yeah, friggin', they actually, um, they, they got their mileage out of it as far as how deep they sound, mm -hmm. for sure. The part where they goes, till we find our way. This is the part that I was like super intrigued by because of the, the chord progression here. It goes from the tonic to the dominant of the two, then it goes to the two, two and like the minor, and it feels like a modulation. But then it goes back to a flat six, major six. I think that's- Flat six in relation to the original one? Uh, flat six in relation to- The new tonic. No, there is no new tonic here. Oh. There is it's just still just tonic. Okay. It feels like a modulation, but it's not a modulation. Okay, I wasn't sure if you switched the one on when you said that. No, 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 I did not, sorry. Flat six, major six, and it just feels so fucking good. I would never expect that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, how the fuck do you think of that stuff? <laughs> I would absolutely love to see this performed, like, two studio specs live. I would love to see that. Well, there is at least some version of it on Netflix, if you ever, ever want to watch that. It's, it's not the Broadway one, is it? No, no, it's the, the from that Hans Zimmer concert. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, I've got their government plays guitar on that concert. Are you fucking serious? I am completely serious. Wow. All right, I'll watch it. The crescendo at 306, which is like that final crescendo after the flute solo, always gives me mad chills. So fucking tight. And by the way, I never hear it as complete without the animal yells. I was listening to it on a streaming service. So I didn't have that. I'm just like, dude, it's like you're missing a whole part of it. You know what I mean? You just described my, my biggest problem with the the official soundtrack release of La La Land. There's so many songs, particularly in the beginning of the movie, the first few songs have a lot of like Foley stuff that's like choreographed with the music that like mm -hmm. hits things and accentuates things that just make the music so much better and they're just not in the soundtrack and it pisses me off every time I just listen to it. So I'm like, I'm just gonna watch the movie again, fine. So then the unexpected modulation at the end. Why does it feel so natural? I found out why, because it's it's awkward, it's an awkward modulation. It should, shouldn't happen as easily as it does. Because it goes, um, all right, so we're doing like our normal normal thing, and then we're hopping on to the dominant, which we're expecting to go back to uh, B flat, which is our tonic, so our dominant's F. All right, so our new key that we modulate to is D flat. The fifth of F flat is C, which is a half step below it, acting kind of like you'd get that that um, dominant feel uh, from, not, not dominant feel, but you know what I mean, like that, that push that the half step from the leading tone leading tone yes thank you <laughs> <laughs> also f is the major third of d flat uh major i was like oh fuck that's how he can make that happen so smoothly and that's also why she's holding that d flat note from carried over from the is it d flat it'd be an f wouldn't it yeah it is an f mm -hmm. sorry yes yeah, she holds that f from the previous um, part of the melody, the previous part of the song, and it fits right through. I'm just like, dear God, how do you think of these things? Yeah, having having notes, that voices that carry over between chords that aren't even in the same key is a really good way to make it feel like one follows after another, True. even though diatonically they and don't. Then, and then of course, immediately following that modulation is that same progression I just fucking came all over talking about before. <laughs> immediately following that, it's just like, ah. Oh. Brilliant. Well done. Total grade for this song, two plus signs. Plus sign. Kiss the Girl by The Little Mermaid. Not by the, damn it. <laughs> Ariel herself wrote this one. <laughs> Kiss the Girl from The Little Mermaid. I forgot how much I actually do love this song. I was hoping I was gonna be able to get to do uh, Under the Sea, because I mean, that's the classic, but I f this one's actually a lot of fun. I never realized how prominent the bass was in that intro. Oh, okay. The, the second stanza of the first verse that we're going through, it was kind of creepy, honestly, like mm -hmm. lyrically. It's like, especially the way that Sebastian is singing it. Oh, whoops. At first it kind of gives off a semi rapey vibe until he starts saying like, ask her. He's like, ask her. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. 
Okay, so I'm not, I'm not raping her today. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Well, if you, I guess if you think of the song in context, the whole point is Ariel wants him to kiss him but can't say something, so it's like Sebastian has to get in there and make it happen. We already know from an audience perspective that Ariel wants it, but Eric yes. doesn't know that. That's the important thing. Yes, and he's super shy. Yeah, Eric is a dumbass. <laughs> Agreed. He's the because Ariel's literally like this, he, like ten he, times. <laughs> He's the dumbest <laughs> Disney prince. Sha la 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 la. Oh, that yeah. whole part with the fro with the frogs on the paddle <laughs> always makes me fucking bust out laughing. It's so funny. By the way, I do love Sebastian's voice on this track. Hmm. Like it's definitely crazy affected, but it's actually very pleasant to listen to. Like, what style would you say that, that is? I don't. It's like a. Is it is it actually a Jamaican guy voicing him? It's kind I, of a I Jamaican don't know. accent. I, I just kind of feel like it's generically Caribbean. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, I'd say so. I don't know. I don't know enough about it to say anything else. <laughs> that's what I've always assumed. Fair. Yeah, fair. And that's the thing too is the instrumentation for this song is actually very chill throughout. It's all the vocal arrangements that actually add the passion to it. It's kind of interesting because you don't really think about it, you know. Yeah, it's a lot of layers. You got the yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which part? Fuck. Ah, I forget how it goes, but you know what I'm talking about, like, near the end of the song when they start reprising and you have all the extra layers of vocals and then also they got the whoa, whoa, sha la la, I'll always sing along, always sing along to the whoa, whoa part. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, and when Scuttle sings, that's also pretty hilarious too. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That whole thing. The last thing that also cracked me up was uh, when fucking... Uh, Sebastian s sings at the very end, Go on and kiss! <laughs> like, like, <laughs> fucking, like, so strongly. The songs feel fun and endearment. I like it. Alan Menken. Love Alan Menken! This is I was a godlike gonna... songwriter. Oh my god. Alright, dude. We're after this. We're gonna have to talk about newsies. I want to know. Oh, you sure. About newsies. Yeah. Just not not here. Not here on this <laughs> video. But yes. Not tight. Is it? Is that a Disney movie? Yeah. Okay. It is. That is Disney. All right. That qualifies. I've only seen the stage show. Total grade for this song. Plus sign. Plus sign. Kill the Beast from Beauty and the Beast. The mob song. The mob song. Yeah. Well, fuck it. It's Kill the Beast. Yeah. It's basically Kill the Beast. They, they just couldn't name a song Kill the Beast for a <laughs> Disney movie. Yeah. So they call it the mob song. One word for this. Epic. Absolutely epic. I was actually in a um, in Beauty and the Beast musical in high school, my senior year. I fucking pissed off so many people because I was never in choir and I was only in jazz band for one year and I just showed up out of nowhere and got the lead role. Oh my god. They were pissed. <laughs> you were a beast? I was beast. Hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, hell yeah until you see the costume I had to wear. <laughs> Everyone, my friends included, were calling me Barf forever. <laughs> like, like bar Barf as in from Spaceballs. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, yeah. It was, it was that level. It still probably looked better than the new live action Beast. No. No. Shots, shots fired though, right? Yeah, shots fired. <laughs> Fuck them, yeah. Either way, if I actually find, we have that on DVD. Someone recorded it on DVD. If I find that, I will post stuff for that on the channel, and you guys can laugh along. This is one of my favorite tracks from the movie, hands down. It's it's uh, leading us up to what is the climax of the movie. I guess you could say it's the start of the climax. Gaston, as a voice actor and singer, is just badass. Has also such a rich tenor. Like, I can't believe he has that much richness to his tone of his voice and can sing that high. Whoever that guy is is just... <laughs> I meant to look him up. I want to find him in other things. If he has done other things, straight up, he's just a crazy see singer, I, vocalist. See if I can get him on the channel. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I wish I had played Gaston when I was when I was it. Because like, if I could pick, I would totally pick Gaston. That was the one I wanted to do because it was so, it's so much fun to be Gaston. So much fun, especially like me with my ego. <laughs> Fucking perfect. You get to be a snob on stage. Exactly, and and people will laugh at it and enjoy it yep. for once. <laughs> The intro of the song builds tension so well, and especially like at the 24 second mark, I love that transition where he's like, it's time to take some action, boys, it's time to follow me. And he's fucking rocking that vibrato so hard. The melodic writing in this track is some of the best in all of Disney, I think. I was about to say that too. It's got so much tension and so much not release. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
that it just keeps building it and building it and the layers grow and then by the time the crowd is all like dun 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 he gives you a little bit of satisfaction of some release at the kill the beast part sure there are there are moments but it's never all gone like they never like hit a thing and you're like ah now we can build up again it's always like slight like one step back three steps forward which mm-hmm. actually a very similar i didn't i didn't put this together a very similar song that alan mankin also composed in newsies was um once and for all i don't what, know the tracks by name very well uh, this is the story you wanted to write so it's very similar to this style okay yeah I can very see similar because it does that like that that low kind of bouncy tension but this it's a, there's just more like a rock semi jazz traditional musical type style and then it builds up to that big crescendo and then releases back down and kind of keeps the tension rolling mm-hmm. so like yeah i didn't even think about that shit i've always thought of this and savages from pocahontas kind of being in a camp together as far as alan bacon writing hmm. the whole like savages savages barely um, even human that one's a lot more in depth there's a lot like more story happening than just one them going to the castle there's like two different sides and then so that the tension is different on both sides but it's all the same because that's the whole point of that song I actually have not seen Pocahontas in its entirety. That's okay. So The music is better than the movie. So I've heard. I mean, why the fuck would you ever make a story out of that? <laughs> this is going on more about how awesome his voice is. It's just like that perfect inflection and mixture of like traditional singing with a speaking voice. So good. The, the way he affects his voice is awesome. The chord progressions in this song, I love. I, I really love them. They're, they're one of my favorites. I'm sure they've been used in other songs. I don't know what songs they are, but I don't want to ruin it for myself. <laughs> I want, I want Keep to the magic. Them. Exactly, exactly. I'll probably wind up making a cover of this song on my channel. Ooh, that'd be awesome. You're welcome to join if you want. Sure. To. Fucking now, let's do it. All right, let's it's confirmed back. now, guys. <laughs> All right. All right. I think one thing that I really appreciate about this is a gr- song is a good example of, but this whole movie. I think as far as Alan Menken's like ability to weave story and song together, mm. this is his absolute masterwork, is this movie. Every song just flows so naturally from what's happening in the movie, and it just explains the story so well and entertainingly, yeah. and all the, all the, the, what the songs accomplish in the story is very inspired. It's not just like, here's the plot. Like, you know, mm. it's like, oh, we have a scene where Gaston's feeling down, so we're gonna have his friend console him. That's a song, and it's a really good song. And then there's a whole song where the... And it doesn't feel out of place. No, it feels like it, that's, that's, if it wasn't there, it would be weird. That's my biggest criticism of so many freaking musicals nowadays, is the songs are so shoehorned in. Like, we were we were talking about The uh, the Greatest Showman before. Mm-hmm. The songs might be okay songs, but in context of the movie, not okay. Yeah, my biggest problem... Uh, this is kind of a tangent, I guess, but my biggest problem with the songs in Greatest Showman is literally all of them have... The exact same emotion. <laughs> yep. No matter what's Every happening, on this is, they're all just top 40. That's it. They're, no matter what's happening in the movie. They're, they're 100% top 40, which feels completely out of place with the... Fuck, sorry, we're going too, off, too far off topic. There's some great directing in that movie, but it's a bad yeah. movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good acting and... Fuck, sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Alan Menken's amazing. That's God-like. all. Godlike. Yeah. <laughs> Don't agree for this song, Two Plus Signs. Two Plus Signs. I will make a man out of you as featured in Mulan. This is the most popular Disney song sung at karaoke, hands down. It's a good mix of modern sound with like the classical musical Broadway feel. You know, I, I don't think it's too much one or the other. With uh, some nice Chinese elements thrown in there. Now, this song doesn't have them as much as the rest of the songs in the movie, but they're there. Are they there? Kinda, yeah, there's like some, some flutey, stringy stuff. Okay. Yeah. So you're talking like, like the, the orchestration, the yeah. ear candy. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. The melody is excellent. Again. Yeah. <laughs> There's one thing Disney's apparently amazing at is melodies. <laughs> Actually, kind of has a rock flair too. A little bit of a rock and roll flair. Uh, the chord progression reminds me a little bit of like an '80s action TV show, and I'm not sure which one it is. And it's because of how uh, the the chords that it resolves to after he says "Make a man out of you." The dun 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 dun. Something about that really feels 80s action show. I'm not sure which one it is. Also has a, a bit of like a march feel to it. Very very inspiring. I, I feel like I'm ready to go be a man. Yep, I agree. It is definitely one of the most just like getting you pumped up Disney songs. <laughs> like I, I'm always like, I feel so much better after hearing it every time. <laughs> no matter what's happening. Of all the songs that have been stuck in my head from all, listening to all these Disney songs, this is the one that has been stuck in my head for a good while now. Um, 
And the part where the guys are chanting, Be a man. It's must like, be swift as a corsi. Sorry, we're not Be a man. There's all this force of a great tycoon. What? Great tycoon. <laughs> I'm a musician. I don't know what words are. <laughs> straight up. Straight up. Glad you said that. Uh, I think that chant is hilarious. Like something that like Matt Stone and Trey Parker would make in one of their songs. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, man. If we're talking about musical, like musicals, <clears throat> songwriting geniuses, they're some of the low-key best <laughs> Yeah, they're really good. Ending with the, the choir at the end is really good. I think that was a great way to kind of cap it off. Mm -hmm. You feel the heart, you know? That's, yeah. all, that's all I got to say about this one. One other thing that I like about this song is it's kind of a good example, I think, of like, it's a kind of an idea slash scene that wouldn't really work on a stage as well, I think, because it's so montage heavy. It's very, it's like a training montage that they put a song to and, mm -hmm. you know, you might say, based on what we said before, it's like, well, that doesn't seem necessary. It could just be a training montage. <clears throat> but I, just in the way it's all executed, it's so very film-like while still maintaining the aesthetic of Broadway, yep. which I find really interesting about it. Total great for this song, plus sign. Double plus sign. So more Alan Menken I'm going to suggest to you Yes. from uh, a movie that uh, did not do well at the time, but has now grown a significant cult following, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, mm. which, in my humble opinion, just raw, as far as raw music, is the single best thing Alan Menken has ever written. Really? All, all of the music in that movie wow. is so legendary. And the opening track, called The Bells of Notre Dame, is my favorite Disney song of all time. It is that so... Almost, that almost made it on today's show. Okay, nice. It's so just dark and brooding and story driven and sung beautifully the melody is awesome and it it's a testament to just how you listen to it and it's like we're really just kind of camping on this one melody but because of the way the story flows and the lyrics flow with it and how the arrangement changes with it as the story flows with it it just feels so perfect and then it crescendos into this motif that is used all over the movie. I can't sing its praises enough. I love this song so much. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> that is my main suggestion, is that song. Cool. If you haven't heard it. I don't know, do you like Tangled? <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen either of those in forever. Okay. And I don't really care for Frozen. That's fine. Controversial opinion here. Frozen, one of the most overrated movies ever. I think Tangled was a far better movie and actually had better music too. But, but Mike, it's the highest grossing animated film ever made. Yeah, there's a lot of dumbasses out there. I'm not afraid to say it. <laughs> I agree. I like the music of Tangled more because I like Alan, the, I like, Alan <laughs> I like the story of Tangled more. I like the characters of Tangled more. I like the art style of Tangled more. Well, it's very similar art styles, but not the same. Glenn King. I think Olaf was completely useless. Wasn't <laughs> even good comic relief. I found him to be more annoying than anything else. He was even just objectively ugly to look at i can't i can't i can't fault you for any of these opinions okay cool <laughs> cool my suggestion this week go throw out your copy of frozen <laughs> that we, is it we know you have one <laughs> don't hide it now that is it for song suggestion friday <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching please leave your suggestions in the comments below i actually had five other songs that i meant to do and i last minute got joey on the show to uh to do this with me because it's fucking to be fun so if you guys want to get the rest of those, I'm, I'd be willing to do it again, uh, but I don't think I'd do it next Friday. I might just do it as like an extra special video or something. Make sure you go check out our sponsor, Recordio. Links are in the description. Also, we got a subreddit now run by community members. Go support the community. And you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Become the Night. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what was happening. <laughs>